Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is grade. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way many people think of and use the verb grade can mean to assess or score a piece of academic work. Many people might think of this as an action that teachers and professors do, where they're looking for uh, what are students understanding, what are they getting right, and maybe what aren't they understanding or where are they making errors. Related to this is a second definition. Outside of schools, grade can mean to sort, arrange, or classify. There are many types of products or even sometimes services, right, that we uh, sort based on quality. Um, I, as I thought about this definition, uh, my thought went to, to jewelry and, and diamonds, precious gems uh, that are judged and, and then sorted and classified, arranged to various qualities. A third way grade gets used can mean to pass gradually from one level into another one. Sometimes this is used to talk about colors and, and sort of the way, um, maybe the way the sky looks. Uh, it, uh, at sunrise or sunset, you might see orange and pinks kind of moving into blues. Um, other shades, but that, that idea of kind of passing from um, one level, one color into another. A fourth way the verb grade gets used can mean to reduce a road to an easy slope. Okay. Now, slope is, is really all about the level of incline. And so I have a picture uh, at the screen that I think might be able to help us understand this fourth definition a little bit better. Maybe you've seen signs with uh, kind of noting in this picture, it's a downhill, right? But again, it works for uphill as well. Um, and it's sort of noting like how severe or how steep is that hill. So, uh, Construction crews regularly adjust kind of how much uh, and that work can be called grading. For now, though, you should know that grade is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, you're going to drop the E on the end because we have a verb that ends with vowel consonant E and that uh, forms grading after we add that suffix. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by just adding D, since this verb already ends in an E. Now our base verb, grade, grade, right? The ending sound was a D, a consonant sound. Uh, and D and T sounds are always special. So when we add ED to the end of words with those two sounds, we add an extra syllable when we say the past tense or, and or participle forms. So here we're going to pronounce the word graded, graded. Okay. Now I do have two phrasal verbs for, I, for us to discuss. This might not be the most common things you hear, but um, always good to be aware. The first you might encounter is to grade down. Many times this is used to mean to give a low score on an assignment. An example of this might be, this teacher will grade down anyone who doesn't type their papers. Now, I don't know that this is happening or is discussed as much um, in 2024 as it was a long time ago when I was in high school and college, but there started to be this expectation uh, that things would be typed. It would be a, a more sophisticated presentation versus just something handwritten. Uh, and so this sentence, again, is is talking about assessing or giving a lower score. Another phrasal verb you might encounter can be to grade up. Now, if you're uh, not working on a farm, this definition might not mean a lot to you, but it can mean to improve a flock, um, 
maybe it's chickens, right, other poultry, or a herd um, by breeding it with a sort of higher quality or more purebred animals. An example of how um, you might encounter this verb. The farmer graded up his herd in hopes that it would make his farm more profitable. Right? Sort of having this higher quality animal might lead to larger sales, more money is what it means. Now, today, we're going to practice making some questions in the simple past tense. And for now, uh, before we get into some more examples, I just want to review that process. So most of the time, when we make these WH or more information questions, we're going to follow the same pattern. Right? So we start with question words. And we'll talk a little more about those question words and what they mean in a moment. But in the past tense, what comes next is the word did. That's, that's our helping verb here. After did comes our subject and then the base verb. Okay? So notice here, we're not using the ED form or if this happened to be an irregular verb, we're not using the irregular form. We're just using the base verb. And this is the most common pattern that we will use in making questions. So if you'd like, you're welcome to pause the screen here and you can practice making some different examples. Uh, again, we're always going to use did with any of those seven subjects listed there. But now let's talk a little more about question words and make some questions with our verb of the day grade. The first type of question we're going to ask is a question about time. Okay? Now, this could be time as, uh, as in a date, right? but it could also be time as on a clock. For that, we use the question word when, W-H-E-N. Now, you're going to see our pattern. So my sample question here is, when did they grade the ground to redirect water flow? Right? So I have a specific time in the past. I'm asking a question about when this action was completed. And this question would go back to our last definition of the verb, right? So uh, changing kind of the, the slope of the ground. Um, maybe to push water away from something or to prevent flooding. Okay. Then no, an, another type of question you might encounter is a question about place or location. For that, we use the question word where, W-H-E-R-E. -E. Okay. An example of this might be, where did you grade sample copies for quality? Here, we might want to know the place or these things taken to a lab uh, and then sort of assessed or sorted, right? Maybe they were do done on site, right? Here, we're asking for a place or location. Another type of question you might encounter is a question about manner. And for that, we use the question word how. This is uh, when we want to know the way in which a particular action has been done. So an example of this might be, how did AI grade these essays? Okay, AI, short for artificial intelligence, big topic in the field of education, something that uh, teachers are, are talking a great deal about in terms of both uh, our instruction and then also in terms of grading. So we want to know, like, how did it do it? What sort of mechanisms? What was it looking for? Maybe uh, we, I'm sure there are many more questions to ask as we, we learn more about that. Another type of question you might encounter is a question about the reason. For that, we use the question word why, W-H-Y. Why did he grade the assignment so harshly? Most commonly with this question word why, you're going to see an answer uh, that includes a word like because, right? That helps us understand. So many times if you're doing listening activities ever and you hear something with why, you hear an answer choice with because, uh, I would think about kind of connecting those. Now let's talk about another type of 
a question. This can be a question about a thing. Sometimes this gets called a determiner uh, in textbooks. So an example of this might be, what did you grade? Right? So maybe these are teachers talking uh, about something we want to know. Was it a quiz, a test, a project, an essay, homework assignment? Right? We want to know the thing. Okay? Now, the last two types of questions I want to talk about are just slightly different. So that's why you see a little gray bar there, just kind of noting we're, we're breaking the pattern that we have been talking about with. But previously, you could notice, right, question word, did, subject, base verb. There is a second way to ask a question about a thing. We have an, a second determiner, uh, and we pronounce it which, W-H-I-C-H. What makes this a little bit different, though, is right after the uh, question word, which, we're always going to have a noun. So this type of question is almost like we're asking for someone to choose between two or more options, right? So that noun is, is kind of the choice here. Which area did the crew grade? So again, this might be a question that ties back to our fourth definition, right? Again, about that idea of slope of the ground, right? And we want to know, kind of, was it the space over there? Maybe it was the space over there, right? But we want to know which one had that adjustment or that change in the slope. Now, the last type of question uh, that is very common uh, also doesn't exactly follow our pattern. That's a question about a person or a subject. Okay? So for that, we use the question word who, W-H-O. And who serves not only as the question word, but also as the subject. So what happens here is we end up using the ed form of our verb. We're not using did our helping verb. So an example, right? Maybe we have something. We want to know who graded this, right? We want to know the person responsible for the action of grading. Okay. I hope that helps you feel a little more confident when you go to make some questions. Now let's move on and talk about some words and phrases related to our verb grade. And the first word we're going to talk about is just the noun form of this word. The noun grade has the exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation as our verb. It also has a number of different meanings. One way we use the noun grade is to talk about a level of study, most commonly in elementary, middle, or secondary schools. An example of this might be, their daughter is in sixth grade and their son is in third grade. Right? So really common to see ordinal numbers used before this noun grade. Now, a second way the noun grade gets used is to refer to a mark that indicates the quality of a student's work, how they are performing, or maybe how they're demonstrating their understanding of a topic or subject. An example of this might be, his grades are mostly A's and B's. So, usually uh, in the United States, A plus is going to be your highest grade. Right? B's are good, C's are considered kind of satisfactory, D's, ugh, you're getting in a bad place there, and then an F would be a failing grade. Now, a third way to use the noun grade is to talk about a particular level, uh, and this could be of a rank, a quality, a proficiency and in intensity, or, or even a value. Again, um, you might think of all kinds of different products and services that are ranked or ass assessed a particular value or quality. An example of this, this is grade A milk. Okay. Another way to use the noun grade is to talk about a level in salary or employment structure. 
This happens within many companies, uh, and it's particularly true um, at our federal government level. I have some friends that work for the federal government, and many times they talk about their uh, their levels, grades, and, and I think they even have steps within grades. So an example of this might be the GS-9 pay grade is generally held by employees in mid-level positions. Okay, so the pay grade that is usually there's going to be a band kind of like the lowest you can be paid at 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 a GS9 and maybe a highest or upper level or limit to the pay grade as well. Now, a fifth way to use the noun grade is to talk about, again, that idea of gradient or slope. An example of this might be, this road has a steep 15% grade. Now, another word you might encounter would be the noun grader. This can refer to a person or thing that grades. An example of this, the company hires hundreds of graders for standardized test essays. There are many companies out there that will hire people specifically to score and assess people's writing abilities. One last phrase for us to discuss today, and that phrase is to make the grade. This can mean to succeed or reach a desired standard or level. An example of this might be a third of restaurants inspected didn't make the grade for proper hot holding temperatures. Okay. Now, this sentence is a little concerning, right? It means uh, restaurants inspected maybe in a particular city or county uh, were told they were not reaching kind of the right safety level or right safety standard when it came to um, keeping hot food hot. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.